Hello everybody. I think we all know that cedar waxwings should have yellow tails. Yesterday in a flock of about a hundred waxwings, I spotted a bird with an orange tail. Now this isn't as rare as the yellow cardinal, but nonetheless, it's another really interesting and fun story about bird coloration. And the rare tail color of waxwings comes about through a completely different mechanism than the yellow feathers of a yellow cardinal. So, come along and I'll explain the mystery of the orange cedar waxwing. Waxwings are found almost across the U.S. and Canada, at least the, most of the populated uh, uh, regions. Uh, there's two species. The Bohemian waxwing, which I'm not going to talk about at all. It's not very familiar to most people. It doesn't live where most people live. To be honest, I haven't seen a Bohemian waxwing since the 1980s. I'd really like to, to get a chance to see that species again. But the other species is the cedar waxwing, which is uh, very widespread and a very well-known bird because it's, it's in most gardens and yards uh, across most of, of the U.S. and Canada. And this is the bird we're going to talk about today. Now, cedar waxwing is high on a lot of people's favorite bird list because they're, they're just such nice little birds. They, they tend to be very tame. You can often get close to them. Uh, they will foul your card with, with <laughs> their droppings. They are uh, fruit eaters, uh, unlike most other uh, birds in our area. And uh, they, they eat a lot of fruit and it passes through them really fast. So they produce a lot of droppings that can create a mess. They have a very soft looking appearance, a very soft plumage. Um, and they're in family Bombacillidae and this soft plumage appearance is characteristic of that family. It's the silky flycatchers and waxwings. Now, cedar waxwings have two patches of bright coloration in their feathers. They have uh, the waxy tips in their wings, uh, which are really interesting traits. Uh, it's uh, carotenoid pigments uh, concentrated in such a pure form, it forms a waxy uh, uh, substance. Uh, and that really hasn't been studied as much as it should, how that occurs, what, why birds might produce carotenoids in such a, a carotenoid coloration in a waxy tip. But they're always red. If you ever see a waxy tip on a waxwing that's not red, call me immediately. I don't think it's physiologically possible to produce a waxy tip that's not red, and I'm not going to get into that. But it's never been reported. On the other hand, the tail is always shown in field guides as yellow and uh, the great majority of waxwings that you see will have yellow tips but a small percentage maybe as much as one percent in some populations of waxwings uh, will show an, uh, a distinctly orange band as opposed to a yellow band and this is what we want to talk about today now this orange tailed waxwing story I think gets more interesting when we learn a little bit about the history of, of this uh, coloration. So no orange-tailed waxwing was ever reported until the 1960s. And if there had been uh, orange-tailed waxwings in any sort of numbers, they would have been reported. Since people have been uh, populating uh, North American writing about uh, natural history, so for centuries, uh, waxwings have been a familiar bird. Uh, museums, ha all museums essentially have uh, a, a series of waxwing s specimens. It's, it's a bird that it's just right there. If you're going to go out and collect birds, it's one of the first birds you'll get. They also collide with windows very commonly. Uh, and so just salvaged birds that get skinned end up filling up uh, collections. Uh, it's it's the bird that we have more of than any other species in the Auburn Museum of Natural History, and and we never go out and kill them for the to put them in the museum. They hit windows and they get turned in. The carcasses get turned in. Anyway, there's a lot of uh, of material to look at with regard to to wax wings, and there were no uh, orange-tailed birds until about 1960, and then. They, they started to appear in, in collections, not because they were sought out, but because as people 
maybe we're putting birds in collection not paying that much attention orange birds got deposited along with the uh, yellow birds and it was it was uh, somewhere around one percent of all the specimens that were collected uh, after the 1960s 1960s 70s 80s 90s that um, made up the, the the study skin population and so this is interesting you know it smacks a little bit of yellow cardinal uh, yellow cardinal didn't suddenly appear and then become uh, uh, more prominent in museum collections it got cited more by people when they started looking for it uh, but this this thing appeared and it it needed an explanation and one obvious explanation a possible explanation was that a mutation had occurred there was a there was a mutation just like the mutation that knocked out the pathway to uh, to red that creates the yellow cardinal coloration. Well, maybe there was a mutation that allowed the conversion of yellow pigments to red in the tail. The, the birds can already do that conversion. Well, all birds, all songbirds can do it in their retinas and their vision. Uh, and waxwings can already do it for feather pigmentation because they, they create those uh, red pigments for their waxy tips. They just don't do it for their tail. And so it seemed reasonable it may have been a mutation that started the conversion in the tail. And so uh, this caught the interest of some biologists. It first caught the interest of a biologist that uh, just did some sleuthing. And what these biologists found was that right around 1960, just when the orange tail morph of the waxwing appeared, a new fruit producing plant had been widely introduced in the range of the cedar waxwing. And this is the Moro's honeysuckle. And these biologists uh, investigated and they found that Moro's honeysuckle produces a, a red carotenoid pigment. I've said in previous videos that red, most land birds don't have access to red pigments in their diet, but Moro's honeysuckle is a source for red pigments. And the red pigments produced by the Morris honeysuckle turned out to be exactly the same red pigment that uh, waxwings were putting in their uh, tail feathers, Rhodoxanthum. And so this created at least a, uh, a historic connection between this new plant that w was known to be a, a food eaten by uh, waxwings and the, the coloration of the tail. Then this was followed up by an experimental investigation, which I thought was really interesting. This is by a, 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 a biologist who was a graduate student at Cornell University at the time, uh, Whitmere. And um, in this study, uh, waxwings were caught from the wild before their fall molt, and then they were raised on different diets. And when you raise the waxwings on a diet of only Moro's honeysuckle fruit, they produced a uh, a bright orange uh, tail. This is the picture on the left here. Then interesting, what Whitmer was able to do was midway through the mold of the tail feathers, when about half the tail feathers had been pigmented, he withdrew the Morris honeysuckle and provided uh, dog food, I think, uh, a nutritious uh, food source that did not have uh, red carotenoid pigments. It only had uh, traces of yellow pigments. And, and what he saw was the birds... Uh, mid molt changed from orange feathers to yellow feathers they they could still they had still had carotenoids they still had the the um the uh pigments needed to produce yellow but they weren't converting yellow to red when you remove the red pigments from their diet remove the moro's honeysuckle you remove the uh, ability to make orange feathers and so in the opinion of of the ornithological com community and and i certainly agree with it this really nailed the whole case for uh, an introduced plant that provided a novel carotenoid pigment, a red pigment, was incorporated directly into these birds' feathers and changed their, their coloration. So this is very different than the yellow cardinal. The yellow cardinal is a mutation that occurred in uh, a few cardinals that caused them to lose red coloration. In this case, it was a uh, consumption of a food source that provided a, a pigment that most birds don't eat, or most birds would be orange, and caused them to deposit the red directly into their feathers, mixed with yellow pigments, and that created an orange uh, color uh, appearance. So 
uh, careful observation and experimentation, I think, has uh, given us a strong hypothesis for the origin of the orange tail in cedar waxwings. But waxwings aren't the only birds that eat honeysuckle fruits in the fall. They're highly frugivorous, so maybe they eat more, have a higher proportion in their diet uh, made up of fruits. But other birds eat fruits in the fall. So why don't we see uh, orange uh, variants of other species besides cedar waxwings? Well, turns out we do. Um, it's not as well known as the cedar waxwing orange tail, but uh, orange of, uh, replacement of yellow feathers with orange feathers has occurred in just about every uh, yellow bird that occurs, it, that molts within the range of the Moros honeysuckle. At the Powder Mill Nature Center, which is one of the larger banding stations in the uh, eastern part of the Un United States, uh, they have a nice uh, tradition of photographing the birds that they capture, especially interesting or unusual birds. And just at Powder Mill, uh, now they handle quite a few birds, but it's only one banding station, over the years they've uh, documented orange replacing yellow in a number of birds, including um, white-throated sparrows, prairie warblers, and yellow-breasted chats. Now, one of the most interesting cases of uh, yellow being replaced by red uh, concerns the northern flicker, and especially the eastern subspecies of the northern flicker, the yellow-shafted flicker. So, uh, through the last few decades, there's been occasional sightings of yellow-shafted flickers with either completely red wings or a few red and a few yellow uh, feathers. And because the western subspecies of the northern flicker, the red-shafted flicker is red, a lot of people thought these were hybrids. This was a gene flow across the continent. This was the red genes appearing in the eastern population. And, and that seemed like a reasonable hypothesis, but it turns out it's not true. Uh, a colleague a, at the um, at University of Saskatchewan, uh, Jocelyn Hooden, investigated this, and he found that uh, the uh, basis for the pigmentation is rhodoxanthin in the flickers, and it's it's a, has a dietary basis, uh, just like it does in um, the waxwings and, and some of the other birds, and so. There's actually no uh, good evidence for hybrid flickers existing in the east. They're, they're really concentrated in the Great Plains uh, hybrid zone. So again, it's a dietary access to red pigments that causes the yellow feathers to manifest um, as red. So I've always found plumage coloration of birds to be an endlessly fascinating topic. I think all birders uh, have a, a real interest in bird coloration because it's it's what we primarily use to identify species, song and, and color, color pattern. Um, and so understanding the basis for variation in coloration really helps us be uh, better birders and just a fun aspect of a, an interest in birds. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're liking this channel, please think about subscribing. And if you like this episode, hit the like button. Um, on the on the front page. Okay, well, get out there, see some birds, and and let me know what kind of variants you see among the birds that you spot. Goodbye until next time.